What if some of our most basic assumptions about health and fitness are mistaken? What if so much of what you are doing to be strong and flexible is hurting your health in the long run? This woman's strength is truly bone deep. She doesn't need muscle strength to carry these rocks because naturally aligned bones are doing the work. This man, were he to try carrying rocks on his head, would have to use straining muscles to do this since he can't rely on aligned bones to help him. His strength is superficial and temporary and will last only as long as he continues to work at it over and over again. Our culture's emphasis on sculpted muscles and rock-hard abs may have come about from our having forgotten along the way how to inhabit our bodies as intended by our design. As young children learning how to walk, no matter where in the world we are born, each one of us has to find the central axis or plumb line along which the joints that carry our weight, ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder line up. Although babies don't understand the details of what they're doing, once they have figured out how to stand and walk without falling down, their leg bones serve as vertical pillars. This places the pelvis in the natural position that allows the spine to be a self-supporting structure. This support, whether we are sitting, standing, or bending, is designed to last a lifetime. Throughout history, on every continent in the world, people have carried bricks, rocks, water, food, furniture, just about anything at all on their heads sometimes day in and day out for decades without developing problems. While it is true that some people who carry heavy loads on their heads do suffer serious damage to the spine, it's not because of what they do, but how they do it. We see countless examples today of people who have never carried loads on their heads, but who have gradually crumbled from a lifetime of not having aligned bones. We think of this shrinking as an inevitable feature of aging, Yet examples of people who remain upright and strong bring some of our basic assumptions into question and demonstrate that relying on muscles will eventually fail us, but aligned bones will not. People who age into their 80s and 90s along the plumb line remain vital and flexible. Their spines remain extended, their shoulders relaxed. They have an easy grace and a lightness in their step and free movement and flexibility in their joints. People who age this way remain physically active long after many of their contemporaries have retired into rocking chairs. Compare these images to those of children today whose computer and TV-driven lifestyles set them on an early course of collapse. Besides the obvious aches and pains that result from misplaced bones, their vital organs and connective valves and plumbing are compressed, impairing blood flow, breathing, digestion, elimination, and nervous system functions. Just how much of a part do these conditions play in determining their future health and the development of many modern diseases that have become epidemic? No one really knows because our current beliefs about alignment and good posture are thoroughly misunderstood. Certainly, were we to have the parts of our car engines so out of whack, we wouldn't be surprised if our cars broke down. The fact that this is not being addressed by anyone today, especially within the medical community, represents one of the biggest blind spots in our thinking of what contributes to overall health and true fitness. The human body is governed by the same laws of nature that apply to physics and engineering. An architect designs a house with vertical pillars that are essential to supporting the weight of the physical structure it's not difficult to imagine the stresses placed on a house when its foundation posts are not absolutely vertical. Welcome to the land of suck and tuck, where as an entire culture we are taught to tuck in the butt, suck in the belly, lift up the chest, and draw the shoulders back. This, we are taught, is the proper way to stand up straight. But is it? In order to stand this way, I must contract many muscles to keep myself held up. Not only does this shorten the back of my spine, squeeze my organs, tighten my diaphragm, and thus affect my breathing, it pulls my leg bones off the vertical line. When I let go of the muscle tension that is holding me up, I collapse, for I don't have aligned bones to support me. In both cases, whether I am collapsed or pulled up, my leg bones are not vertical. 
Take a look at what happens, even when I am working to hold myself up. If someone presses on my head, mimicking the effects of gravity over many decades. Like a building without foundational support, I crumble. Notice how different things are when I am supported by vertical legs. Here there can be a relationship between pelvis, ribcage, shoulders, and skull that provides maximum length through the spine. If someone presses on my head now, as hard as he can, I am able to easily withstand the forces of gravity, or rather stand with gravity, not as a victim, but as a partner in natural living. Knowing these facts causes me to change the way I exercise, the way I might practice yoga, lift a heavy box, or bend to tie my shoes. Over time, as I apply this awareness, my body gradually realigns itself. Here's the good news. Just about anyone can relearn, with a bit of practice, how to return to the natural design that brings us into physical alignment with an essential aspect of who we are as human beings. In this way, we become free to be genuinely strong, easily flexible, and comfortably healthy for the full length of our lives.